Hey y'all, Irick Sky here. Now this video actually has a lot going on because I'm testing some new equipment, I'm testing a new studio, and uh, and ultimately I want to talk about the Phantom 4 because I owe everyone ultimately that first out of the box unboxing video and the field test and and hundreds of videos to come after that. Uh, but I am uh, I'm slightly moderately overwhelmed right now because if you haven't seen my other videos. I'm actually going to New York City to film in the YouTube space. Now, if you're not familiar with YouTube space, it's a, uh, it's a very high-end production facility, and I'm going to shoot some videos in there. So it ought, to be, it ought to be an amazing experience. So anyway, let's get back to the Phantom 4. So I don't have the Phantom 4 yet. As soon as I can get it from 400 or below.com, I'm going to get one here. Uh, but I wanted to talk about the... Um, just on paper, based upon my experience with Phantom, now keep in mind, I've flown Phantom 1, Phantom 2, Phantom 2 Vision Plus, Phantom 3 Professional, and now I'm waiting to get my Phantom 4 on my doorstep and out of the box. But looking at it on paper, uh, there's a few things, and I'm on the, on the website right now just reading the specs, but there's a few things that do impress me. I like the way that the body, the gimbal assembly, and where the, S, the micro SD card goes, I like that design on paper. It looks a lot better. I didn't like having the, the micro SD card up above the, uh, the camera, you know, between the, you had the camera, and then you had that piece that connected to the body. I didn't like having it there. So that looks good. The, um, the improved battery life on paper, again, I haven't tested it in the real world yet. That's a positive. What's really neat and until I test it, I can't say that it's, that it's actually that good of a thing. But I, I like the object tracking. I like how, on paper at least, they've indicated that it'll, you know, it can track you around without having to wear, without, with, the, you know, with the Phantom 3 Professional, and you can check out my videos where I did the field test, the follow me mode and all of that. That was less than optimal because I'm running around through the field with the Phantom 3 controller in my hand. So it wasn't a situation to where... It, it signaled what was coming, what's next, and, and I'm hoping they deliver with Phantom 4 with that because, again, on paper, the Phantom being able to track someone or an object is really cool because it opens up a lot of doors. Now, what I do like, and keep in mind, my comments about the Phantom, most of my stuff centered around video because I look at it as a tool to capture entertaining 4K Ultra HD video. Brings up another point. The camera itself... It's, uh, you know, it's still 4K 30 frames per second. So looking at it on paper, I don't, I don't necessarily see anything that screams this is a camera upgrade from the, uh, from the Phantom 3 Professional. But again, I do like the way they've done the gimbal. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that performs. What I'm also curious about with the mode where it follows, where it tracks an object, I'm curious to see if uh, if I can cause the landing gear or the props to enter the frame. Because if that thing can track an object and not capture the, the landing gear or the props, that's a really cool tool for someone that's using this to capture entertaining videos. So, you know, that's something I'm really excited about. Again, I mentioned it earlier, the enhanced battery life. That's something that, uh, you know, if it is longer, that's, that's always a positive. You know, pack, these batteries are somewhat large, so be able, being able to pack more from a size and weight perspective, for me, is an extreme positive. I mean, other than that, I mean, there's really not, I think there's some claims about a new sport mode or whatever they call it. I don't care about that kind of stuff. All I care about is video stability, video quality, and the ability to not capture the landing gear and or other elements, you know, the props, whatever part, other part of the craft, in the frame while I'm filming 4K video. So if this thing delivers on all of that, it, it could, be a, uh, could be a decent upgrade. Now, am I going to say that the Phantom 3 Professional, because a lot of y'all have asked me this, you're like, hey man, is it a good time to get a Phantom 3 Professional and a discount? In my, in my opinion, most definitely, the Phantom 3 Professional, to this date, is the best drone that I've used. 
captures great 4K video. If you don't believe that, check out my hundreds of videos and see for yourself. What do you think about the quality? I've been thoroughly impressed. But with that being said, the Phantom 4, at least on paper, and, and again, stay tuned to my channel, subscribe, youtube.com forward slash irixguy, because as soon as I get the Phantom 4, I am going to assault it from a review perspective. I mean, I'm not going to assume, oh, this is DJI, it's going to be some good stuff. No. Taking it out, I expect things to fail. When and if they fail, you'll see it, I'll see it. And if it presents troubleshooting challenges, hey, that's an opportunity for me to learn, for you to learn, and just have a good time. I mean, this is not, this is not an edited channel. You want to watch edited, re edited reviews? Go somewhere else. But I just tell you how it is. Maybe good, maybe bad, maybe a combination of both. I'll just tell you how it is. So, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. And to, to go ahead and, and I, although I'm super excited, I will tell you that when all the features were officially unveiled, I was a little bit underwhelmed. Because in my mind, I was expecting retractable landing gear. I was expecting uh, possibly a camera with a greater resolution than 4K. I mean, obviously, 4K is still somewhat a future technology for video, but having a larger, even if it was 6K, and maybe, you know, maybe it's not 8K, but having that larger uh, video canvas would be good for zooming in and zooming out in post-production and still publishing the project in 4K, Ultra HD. I've got to get a studio monitor. I keep looking out the left corner of my eye, this new studio, and I'm not at the YouTube studio right now, but... This new studio, I've got to look over there because I don't have a, I don't have a wall-mounted uh, LCD display on my camera right now. So I've got to work on that. You can see me, you know, I keep looking over there. So this is, this is, uh, I tell you, it's it, the new studio and then the, the Phantom 4 coming out. I mean, all of this is funny how everything just kind of hits at once. And, and I'm so excited to take that thing out in the field because I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not completely satisfied with what I see on paper. I wanted more. But there may be a reason that DJI has only released, at least at this point in time, one Phantom 4. Because you remember Phantom 3, when it first came out, there was Phantom 3 Pro, which was 4K Ultra HD. There was Phantom 3 Advanced, which at the initial time of release topped out at 1080p, but then with a the firmware upgrade, receives 2.7K. So, what my speculation leads me to believe is that we know GoPro is slated to come out with GoPro, GoPro Karma, which is a GoPro drone. And they're expected to do that this year. So, hey, there's Sean Coonery. Hey, Sean Coonery. Um, so, with that being said, get on the video here. Yep. So, with that being said, uh, I think that DJI is pulling a smart maneuver. And they're saying, you know what? We don't know what to expect from GoPro. And we may have to keep our options open. You know, we want to be the first drone on the market in 2016. But what we do want to do is ensure that when and if GoPro releases a product that's far superior, we've got to go out and we've got to say, hey, <laughs> that was Phantom 4, but here's Phantom 4, blah, blah, blah. And they've got to be prepared because inevitably... What I expect is going to happen here is that we've got GoPro not only coming out with drone, but GoPro Hero 5 action camera, which is expected to have 8K Ultra HD. So, you know, you don't want to have someone like GoPro surpass you. DJI is my favorite drone on the market today, DJI Phantom. I must emphasize Phantom. I don't care about their other drones. But the DJI Phantom is my favorite drone on the market today. And I think that with GoPro... They're about to encounter their first true competition. I know there's a lot of other brands out there, and there's some that do quite well. But in my opinion, the first true competition will come from a proven action camera company with a proven record of quality customer service. And I think that's what's really got uh, DJI. They're like, oh, you know, we may get dethroned. You know, they're shaking in their boots. But, you know, I have no bias here. I like... I like what works, and for me, the Phantom has worked really well. With that said, I love GoPro. 
the action camera. And I'm beyond stoked to get my hands on the GoPro Karma drone and see how it stacks up and to see where this industry as a whole goes. Because we're, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we, we were in the bag cell phone days. If you're older, you remember you had a bag and it had a cell phone in it and you had an insanely high uh, monthly service charge and you had dead spots all over. There were a few places where you could actually use the thing. But we're kind of getting past that with drones now. We're, we're past the bag cell phone days and we're not yet to, uh, to the small cell phone, but those big, you know, that, that aren't in a bag. Those phones that were probably about that tall and you hold it up, it's like from, from here to here, you know, really big phone. We're kind of getting there. We're still in the infancy of drone technology. So it's something that all of this excites me. I mean, this is like reliving the, uh, the birth of, uh, of computers. You know, and you had computers and you had bulletin board services and you had your, your, uh, your own line services pre-internet like Prodigy, CompuServe, AOL. And then you started to see the local internet service providers pop up. And then before you knew it, your, your phone company and your cable company, they were offering high-speed broadband internet to your house. And then social media is kicking in. You know, you got, you're not just uploading and, and downloading MP3s. Now you've got videos like YouTube, like we're on right now. I mean, it's, it's fascinating. But I'll get off my rant. Uh, stay tuned. I mean, you can count on me, youtube.com forward slash iRixGuy, because I'm going to, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to take that thing apart. Not literally, but I'm going to take it apart from a performance perspective in the field to ensure that it meets or exceeds my expectations. Because if it doesn't, you will see it. And if it does, I can't wait to see what GoPro brings to the table. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash iRixGuy. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm an independent channel, and it's viewers like you that help me to continue to grow. I appreciate your viewership, and y'all have a good day.